Each piece of jewelry has its own unique fate. Sometimes royal jewelry from former ruling families is lost, others end up in museums or private collections, and some are even dismantled. For more than 75 years, the Bank of Italy has kept a collection of jewelry from the Italian royal family, and their fate remains unknown to this day. The collection includes jewelry encrusted with 6,000 diamonds and 2,000 pearls. Among them are necklaces, brooches and tiaras, Queen Margarita Savoy not tiara, to which today's video is dedicated, is also among these hidden jewels. Before we start, please support my channel by clicking the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you. The tiara, made up of diamonds, round pearls and large pear-shaped pearls, consists of diamond Savoy knots intercepted by pearls and topped with larger pear-shaped pearls. The Savoy knot is the family symbol of the House of Savoy members of which ruled Italy from 1861 to 1946. The shape of the Savoy knot is comparable to a figure eight and is accompanied by the motto, it tightens, but does not constrain. The tiara was created by the jeweler Musi around 1883 with funds from the Italian state treasury, not the House of Savoy, so it became part of the Italian crown jewelry. The Savoy knot tiara was created for Queen Margherita, the first queen of modern Italy, who was known as the Queen of Pearls because of the dozens of pearl necklaces she always wore, and she was photographed wearing the tiara in numerous portraits, paintings, and state events until the assassination of King Umberto the I in 1900. Incidentally, the same Musi firm made another grand diamond and pearl tiara for Margarita, which is still in the possession of her descendants. In this portrait, you can see the Savoy knot tiara combined with Margarita's incredible pearls, she also paired the tiara with diamond and emerald jewelry, including the amazing family diamond and emerald necklace and Stuart emerald brooch. The emerald necklace was sold in 1985. The next owner of the tiara was Margarita's sister-in-law, Queen Alana, the daughter of King Nicholas I of Montenegro. Alana married Umberto and Margarita's only son, Vittorio Emanuel, in 1896. When Umberto was assassinated in 1900, they became King Vittorio Emanuel, the third and Queen Alana of Italy. Alana became the second Italian queen and was depicted by the Savoy not tiara only a few times in the first few years of King Vittorio Emanuel III's reign until Queen Alana gave her personal jewelry to fund Italy's war effort in First World War in 1915. Subsequently, Queen Alana exclusively adorned herself with the Savoy knot tiara and necklaces sourced from the Italian crown jewels for various portraits, paintings, and significant state occasions. This included events such as the wedding of her daughter, Princess Mafalda of Savoy, to Prince Philip of Hesse in 1925, as well as the Italian royal family's visit to the Vatican in 1929 to commemorate the signing of the Lateran Treaty bringing an end to the 60-year feud between the Vatican and the Kingdom of Italy. Queen Alana also wore the tiara for the wedding of her only son, Crown Prince Umberto of Italy, to Princess Marie Jose of Belgium in 1930, and also likely for the wedding of Tsar Boris of Bulgaria to her daughter, Princess Giovanna of Savoy, and the wedding of her younger daughter, Princess Maria Francesca of Savoy, to Prince Luigi of Bourbon Parma in 1939. The tiara was an important part of Alana's casket throughout her husband's reign. Queen Alana did not wear a tiara during the Second World War. It is known that during the war the jewels were hidden in a tunnel in the center of Rome. Following the war, the Italian royals faced a precarious position on the throne. King Vittorio Emanuel III, aware of the irreparable damage to his reputation due to his association with Mussolini's regime, had delegated much of his authority to his son, Crown Prince Umberto, in 1944. Despite these efforts, the situation remained challenging. In 1946, a referendum was scheduled to determine whether Italy would retain its monarchy or transition to a republic. In an attempt to garner support for the monarchy, Vittorio Emanuel formally abdicated in May 1946, paving the way for his son, King Umberto II. However, the strategy failed. In June 1946, the public voted in favor of establishing a republic, leading to the expulsion of King Umberto, 
and all male members of the House of Savoy from the country. Prior to going into exile in Portugal, Queen Marie Jose had already left Italy, taking her personal jewelry with her. Before joining her in exile, Umberto placed the Savoy knot tiara and numerous other jewels in a sealed leather case, which he concealed in the Bank of Italy in Rome. Alongside the jewels, he reportedly left a note instructing the bank to release the pieces only to whoever has the right to them. The crown jewels consisted of the Savoy knot tiara along with a diamond swag necklace, a diamond riviere, a large diamond chain necklace, a diamond bow brooch with a pink diamond, and various brooches, bracelets, and loose stones. In 1948, a mere two years after the exile of the Savoys, Newspapers detailed the confiscation of the family's personal possessions following the plebiscite that led to the abolition of the monarchy. The Ottawa Citizen reported, the crown jewels, valued at 2 million lire, were not considered the property of the House of Savoy but were deemed state-owned. Described as unremarkable in the realm of crown jewels, former King Umberto reportedly dismissed them as junk. The Queen's diadem, adorned with 1,040 brilliance, was deemed to have a value no higher than $1,000. Saying that Umberto called the jewels junk seems implausible. Unless, of course, it was an attempt to mislead. Firstly, who would hide jewelry in a jar if they thought it was junk? Secondly, famous jewelry collectors, on the contrary, talks about Umberto's love of art, jewelry, and his involvement in the family collection. Throughout his life, Umberto II had a great passion for history and all forms of art, including jewelry. He loved his family collection of royal jewelry not only for its historical significance, but also for its beauty. Three decades later, speculations in Italy hinted at the possible theft of the jewels. These rumors were quashed when, as reported by the New York Times, a gathering that included government and bank officials, agents of the exiled monarch, legal experts, and a prominent Roman jeweler convened at the bank to inspect the sealed case. Upon lifting the lid, it was revealed that all the tiaras, necklaces, rings, brooches, and pendants were there, prompting the resealing of the case and its return to bank custody. The attending jeweler assessed the collection's value as only a few hundred thousand dollars, humorously remarking, you have to remember Italy always had a poor crown, nothing like England or Iran. In 2002, when Vittorio Emanuele of Savoy, Prince of Naples, and his son, the Prince of Venice, were finally permitted to return to Italy, they explicitly declared their intention to forego any claims on the jewels. They asserted, for that matter, we have no claim on the crown jewels. We have nothing in Italy, and we are not asking for anything. However, in 2022, Members of the Italian monarchy got bold and demanded that the jewels be returned to their dynasty. It is reported that the descendants of the last king of Italy, Umberto II, have made an official request to the Bank of Italy to hand over to them the royal jewelry that has been in the custody of the bank since 1946. It was not possible to reach an agreement with the bank on the return of the jewelry, so the fate of the jewelry, the owner of which has not yet been determined, will be decided by the Italian government and the court. Prince Emmanuel Filiberto, grandson of Umberto, previously told the Telegraph newspaper, Italy must do what is right and appropriate and return the jewelry to my family. He added, the monetary value of the jewelry does not interest us. What is more important is the historical and sentimental value they have for the family. Italy is almost the only republic in the world where the private property of the former royal family is still in the hands of the state. This is shameful. Even Russia and Yugoslavia have returned private property to their royals. It is worth noting that experts assume that the heirs will not be recognized as the rightful owners and the jewels will become the property of the state. Then there is a possibility that they will end up in a museum and the public will be able to see them for the first time in decades. I personally would love to see the jewels on public display one day. However, Prince Emmanuel has also said that the jewelry may one day be displayed in a museum, but first his family will have to regain ownership. The case is still ongoing. If you have more recent information, share it in the comments. Thank you for watching this video. Share your impressions in the comments and support our channel by subscribing and liking. Thank you.